So let's take a look here at example number three. See if we can use what we've learned about delta y and dy and uh, delta x and dx to answer this question. Suppose that I'm working with the function the cube root of x minus one. And I want to find the values of delta y and of dy. We'll round them off to say four places. If x changes from the value of two to 2.4. Okay, so delta y is gonna say, how much does the y value of the graph change? And dy is gonna say, how much does the y value of the tangent line actually change. Okay, so we can calculate this out pretty easy. So first, we might note here that if we're changing from the x value of 2 to the x value of 2.4, that um, delta x, remember, which is also the same thing as dx, is just how much did we shift? which here is really easy, that's just 0.4, right? I went from 2 to 2.4, so I went 0.4 units over. Well, then automatically, computing delta y becomes very, very easy. Delta y, again, if I look back at the picture, is just how much did my y value go up in my function? Well, that should be really easy to determine because I can just see, well, let's calculate what the y value is at the last point and just figure out where we started, and then we'll find the difference. So if you were to go ahead and go to a calculator and actually try this out, we could see what sorts of values that we end up with. If I plug in 2.4 and I cube it and then subtract one, you would actually see that rounded off to four places, I'm going to end up with a value of uh, seven point, oh, wait, sorry, not, uh, if I plugged in 2.4 and I, uh, and I raised it to the uh, third power and then subtracted one, what I would end up with is a value of 12.8424. You could double check that, just type it into a calculator. If I was to plug in the value of two, this is actually much easier. Two to the third power happens to be eight and eight minus one is seven. So I'm going to be subtracting seven. So this is my later y value. This is my earlier y value. And so I can see then that the difference here is going to actually just be 5.8424. So there's my value of delta y. If I'm thinking about this pictorially, I would see that a graph of x to the third minus one might look something kind of like this. And so to go from a value of say two to 2.4, I can see that I've increased from here to here. So I've gone up about 5.8424 units. But now, I might have to think about what's going to be happening with the tangent line. How much would the tangent line have increased by this particular point? Okay, well, let's see. Um, I can calculate my delta y, or sorry, my, my dy, no problem here. I just have to recognize that this is going to be f prime of x times dx. Well, I'll notice here that to find the slope of my tangent line, I'd have to plug in two, because that's where I'm starting. And de delta x and dx were the same thing, so this is gonna be just times 0.4. I can also see here that f prime of, oops, let me go ahead and replace this here with a two. Um, but f prime of two is gonna be really easy to compute here because f prime is actually just going to be a three x squared. And so what I'm gonna have here is a three x squared. Now I just have my x in as a value of two. So this is gonna be the value of 12 times 0.4, and that's gonna leave me with a value of 4.8. And so much like I see here in the picture, how much the tangent line has increased is not as much as how much the actual function has increased. Okay, could I try the exact same thing, but now imagine that instead of going from two to 2.4, I go from two to 2.05. Let's see what we would end up this time. So first, we note that delta x and dx ultimately are the same value. They're just telling me how much horizontal shift we have, which in this case is 0.05. I can then calculate delta y pretty quickly. I would just go ahead and imagine drawing the same exact sort of a picture. I would say, let's calculate f of 2.05, and we'll subtract from that f of 2. Now, over here, I can see that if I was to type this into a calculator and round off to four places, 
I would end up with a value of roughly 7.6151. And then if I plug 2 in, I would get a value of 7. So I end up with an overall value of 0.6151. This is the change in the vertical coordinate, that is the y coordinate for my function. And of course it makes sense that it wouldn't be as large of a change because I didn't make as big of a shift in the x direction. So imagine now if I was to instead go over to just 2.05, right? I mean I only went up a tiny little bit. And now I want to see how much the tangent line has gone up. So I can now calculate dy. And my dy here is going to be equal to, again, f prime of 2 times my dx. Well, my derivative is still the same. My tangent line was still constructed at 2. So I'm still going to get this 3 times 2 to the second power here. But now I'm just going to multiply by 0.05 as opposed to 0.4. When I do this, you could double check me, but I end up with a value of 0.6. And so again, what we see is this important idea that if it's the case that I progress a good distance away, right, I start to get a good distance away from the value of 2, I can start to see a gap between the, ra uh, the, the rising and falling of the function and the tangent line. That is, I can start to see a gap between those points. But if I don't move very far, away from where my point of tangency is, my values of delta y and dy, that is my tangent line and my original function, stay really close together. They almost experience a very, very similar amount of change.